so it's almost maple season here, syrup season. I'm going to make a, an evaporator out of this old filing cabinet that a friend gave me. He was throwing it away. Actually, he gave me two of them. Uh, this one is letter size, so it's slightly narrower, and it'll fit the pans that I'm ordering. So uh, a couple of guys uh, have done this before. I've seen it on the internet, so I figured I'd give it a try myself. I started by just popping out all four drawers, which was really very, very easy. Uh, and now I've got the carcass. This is going to be uh, how we're going to do it. I'm going to cut out these cross braces, and that's where the steam tray table, uh, the, the, the pans are going to go. And then this end here, it's already an opening, so that's where I'm going to put the doors to uh, open to, to make the fire. And then around the other end here is where I'm going to put the chimney. So to cut the metal, I'm going to try just using my uh, circular saw with one of these combination wood and metal blades that I got. They have them just for metal, but um, uh, they didn't have them in stock, so I got this combination wood and metal one. Most of what I'm going to be cutting through is pretty thin, but it does say that it's okay for cutting angle iron, uh, flat bar, uh, threaded rod, so it should be okay for what I'm doing. The door for the uh, opening for the wood stove here um, is a firebox. I'm going to use the door, uh, the drawer front from the uh, file cabinet, and it's actually just a little bit too wide, but uh, that's okay. I get to test out the new saw. So I started by taking out any plastic. There was a plastic shield that was here that I took off, but now I see that the inside of the um, handle is plastic. So I'm going to want to remove that because plastic is not going to do well under fire and I'll have to come up with some way of closing that hole from behind. But uh, first things first. I probably shouldn't have to say it at this point, but make sure you're wearing some uh, hearing protection, some eye protection, and some decent gloves, because you're going to be working with sharp metal from this point in. Uh, I don't see any way of um, separating this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut along I'm gonna just cut along the edge here to um, keep as much of this lip as possible to keep the door pretty solid. But then at, at some point, I'm gonna to need to cut a half inch off the edge here, which is where the hinges are gonna go. And then the rest of the perimeter of the door will be pretty, uh, pretty sturdy. I gotta say this, uh, this setup here cut beautifully, cut like a hot knife through butter, just like it was cutting through wood. So uh, I've got this off, and now I'm going to mark it. I'm going to mark it to where I'm going to cut for the hinges, because like I say, it's just a little bit too wide. Um, and then that's now I've cut off this edge where the hinges are going to go, and I've got some uh, T hinges and some self-tapping screws. I got number 10 by three quarter. Um, yeah, I, I thought they were nice and snug. They had good size heads for these holes and three quarter I thought was uh, gonna be all purpose, you know. I, I could have gone with a little bit of shorter for some functions, but then there's other places where I think I might need uh, at least three quarters. So a hundred in a box, I just figured I'd get this. Now that I have the door in with a couple of hinges, it works just fine. Uh, I'm starting to wonder what I should put down bottom, whether I should put a fixed panel or whether I should put another door because honestly this door might be a little too high for reaching the um, you know for loading wood into it so let me think about this so it's starting to get dark but here's what I decided to do I decided to use um, a door for down here this is going to I'll put some kind of flap on here that I can use it for uh, for air circulation and then you can see I put the um, what do you call it the, the the brackets from the drawers in here and they're gonna hold the grate so the fire is going to be at this height so there's no need to have this open 
except maybe for cleaning it out at some point in the future, but uh, clean out ash. But uh, um, for now, for this year, I just put this in here and uh, and this, it stops up against it. So I think we should be okay. A few quick observations uh, for tonight. I was lucky I have some old bed frames laying around. I think, uh, you know, they're not hard to find, but I was lucky uh, I have some laying around. Uh, for this end here, for the for the stovepipe, um, I have a four inch round that I was thinking of mounting right here in the middle somewhere. Um, I see other people had um, uh, a rectangle, um, a rectangle to round. They didn't have them in the store. And I just don't know if this, will give me as much uptake as I need. So, uh, um, yeah, one more see. tip. I, I didn't feel like the um, sheet metal screws were holding well enough. So I got um, I got these uh, nuts for them here. Uh, they seem like they're holding a lot better. I'm not putting them everywhere. I'm just putting them um, uh, where it didn't seem like it was holding well enough. Okay, says, since I don't have the technology to do two things at once, um, I just used my uh, uh, Sawzall, or my, uh, it's actually a DeWalt version of the Sawzall, a wrecking saw, whatever you want to call it, with the uh, metal blade. And I cut out these cross braces, and then I marked where I'm going to put the uh, chimney. I said, I'm going to put it on the corner, and a little bit lower. Um, uh, the reason why I'm putting it in the corner is because uh, I want to attach some angle iron here and run it up to be a, a brace for the top of it to make it sturdy. So then I drilled a couple little holes here with uh, um, you know, just regular saw. And now I'm gonna get at it with my, uh, my jigsaw, cut a circle hole there for the uh, chimney, which is just, it's just a four inch uh, round that I'm using. Um, hopefully that's gonna give me enough uh, uh, updraft um, yeah, it's uh, an experiment. Now, as you see, I've cut out these um, the, the top braces of the uh, drawers. And so now I'm going to be able to um, have enough room for the pans to drop down. And I can put the expanded metal grate laying on these. And then it's not going to hit up on the top end here. Um, I cut my first bed rail and uh, getting ready to cut the second one I uh, popped in the uh, uh, the chimney here and I put it close to the corner I think I'm gonna put a corner brace just running from this corner here right on up and then I'll attach it somewhere near the top so stand by well I called an audible here one advantage of using an old bed frame is that uh, it's got the attachment for where the uh, caster used to go so I'm going to use that as a bracket to hold the chimney up so I guess it didn't need to be so close to the corner uh, I thought I was going to use an angle iron on the corner but uh, um, I went right through the wall here with um, with a scrap I just put two bolts in there and that ought to hold it just fine it's nice and uh, nice and sturdy for holding the chimney. So I'm putting the uh, chimney on I got a couple of um, got a couple of self-tapping screws here coming through into the um, what do you call it the leg for the uh, bed frame. So that's nice and sturdy. And then I put a damper in here, uh, and then I have to clip it closed around here, and I should be good to go. Well, here's my saporator, sap evaporator. Uh, made out of an old filing cabinet. And it's an uh, old filing cabinet laying on its back. I had an old bed frame that I used to make the brackets for the uh, latch for the combing around here to be sturdy. And I also used some of it to make a um, mast to hold the chimney up. And the chimney has a damper in it. Uh, let's see, and this can go all the way closed or 
that can go partly open to give an updraft. So that's it. It seems to be working. It's uh, definitely steaming off the snow that I put in it. So it will do the same thing for maple sap when I tap the maple trees next week. I'll put the maple sap in there and it will steam off and I will be making maple syrup.